The Dodgers lost the series to the Padres, and the common theme was clear. When they pitch well, they win. When they don't, they lose. And on Sunday, they pitched really, really not well. <sighs> Let's get into it. Let's get locked on, Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Dodger fans, this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to our everydayers for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. So please subscribe wherever you're watching or listening right now. My name is Jeff Snyder. That guy next to me is my co-host, Vince Samperio. Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans, just like a lot of you. We've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box and the locker room. So we're not quite insiders, but we bring you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to you as customers. And Vince, I want to tell you a story. It's story time with Jeff. Uh, there was a story that was told so much when I was growing up that we all believed it that one time when I was 10 years old pitching my first game in minor A uh, for the Pirates, uh, that I walked 11 batters in a row. And uh, that that turned out to not be true. We found the scorebooks uh, several a few years ago and dug through them, found that game. And what actually happened was I threw 11 balls in a row to start my outing. So I only walked, and, and, and I stayed in the game. I did end up walking like five guys, but it wasn't, nearly as bad it was made as it was made out to be. And I've been trying to figure out a way to, to make Sunday's Dodgers pitching performance not be as bad as it seems. But the fact is they did walk 14 guys in nine innings. And that is, what, 12 too many? Like, it's at least 10 too many for sure. And uh, once you get into double figures too many, I mean, it might as well be a 1,000 too many. Uh, it. It's remarkable the Dodgers only lost by three runs. They they deserve to lose that game twice. Yeah, a lot of double play bailouts. James Paxton, you know, got through pretty looking pretty good after uh, through the through most of it, and then it all kind of fell apart in the later innings. When one, they're kind of out of arms, and two, they weren't pitching very well. The arms that did come in. Yeah, and I was I was just now on the on the postcast with Pete Fox talking about this, and I think if the Dodgers, you know, we're going to talk in the next segment about injuries and the Dodgers pitching plans this week, but it came into play tonight because I think if the Dodgers didn't have at least one and maybe two bullpen games coming up this week, that they would have pulled Paxton after five innings, and Paxton would have survived his six walks uh, and pitched five innings and allowed one run but they ran him back out there because they really needed some length and he walked two guys. And so still only pitched five innings, five plus technically uh, had eight walks and both of those guys came around to score. And so uh, five innings and three runs allowed on eight walks looks a lot worse than five innings and one run allowed on six walks. Yeah. And even then five innings and three runs is basically almost what you'd expect out of Paxton right now kind of what he's been going you know dave roberts earlier in the game when he was mic'd up or when they interviewed him said that paxton was probably going to go 100 105 pitches which was interesting considering we never hear that being the threshold for the amount of pitches the pitcher is going to go that day but knowing that you know paxton's probably on the older side so they don't care as much about development with him and the fact that they did need some length he was going to get stretched out there you know had he pitched well enough Unfortunately for the Dodgers, he didn't pitch that great, and the pitches came bad pitching, and the pitch count came faster than they thought. Yeah, and he didn't even get to the pitch count. They yeah. ended up having to pull him because they didn't want to give the game away. And unfortunately, Ryan Brazier came in and said, hey, I can walk guys too. He walked the guy. Then he got the double play, uh, and then I think it was a Jackson Merrill that who just Jackson Merrilled one. That's yeah. what Jackson Merrill does. That guy, yeah, he's a good ball player. Um uh, yeah, and so after that inning, they had walked nine guys, and then J.P. Fireisen said, hey, I haven't pitched in a couple of years. Can I walk some guys? And they said, sure, why don't you come walk some guys? And he gave up a few runs. He got the loss, gave up a three-run double to uh, 
to jerks and pro far did he give up the double or was that after the no, he yeah gave, he, he, did. he gave it up on the yeah. half ball. i know all three of the runs were his but yeah so it was just it was an ugly game and honestly when pro far hit that double it's like okay there it is like the dodgers had skirted danger for so long it's like how are they still in this ball game and then that happens like, oh oh they're not really anymore uh because even this like well, the offense could, I mean, they have what's in it. They have what it takes to come back, but also you look at the part of the lineup that's coming up and everything. It's just, it was just one of those games. And, you know, it would have been funny if they had won more than anything because they did not deserve to win that game. Uh, but if you look like the other times when they've walked at least, I think there's been like seven other times they've walked at least, actually, I have it pulled up here still on my laptop. Uh, they've walked at least 13 batters seven other times, and they actually won two of those games. Uh, you know, so sometimes you win games you don't deserve to win, uh, but the Dodgers didn't deserve to win on Sunday. They maybe did deserve to win on Friday uh, until, you know, Ryan Brazier gave up a 3 one homer to Fernando Tatis, and, you know, that was the big blow. But overall, like, yeah, the Dodgers were up 7-3 to three in that game. Uh, they hit four homers in the first couple innings. Uh, it looked like it was going to be a dominant performance. And are you worried about Ryan Brazier? I mean, I was worried before, and then he kind of righted the ship, and then now back to worried. I mean, worried because realistically when they got him last year, he was good, and you could tell exactly why he was good. Like, he learned a new pitch, and he was able to, you know, get different guys out from both sides of the plate, and now it's not even something you can necessarily pinpoint. Like, yesterday he did walk a guy, then he got the ground ball, but then he gave up a hit, and it's like – Every outing he's had that's been bad hasn't necessarily been something specific, at least that I can see, to point out to. So that's kind of what's a little bit worrisome is that maybe his just doesn't have the stuff this time. Or, you know, people learn that, hey, he has this new pitch. Let's either lay off of it or look for it or whatever the case is. And now, you know, they make their adjustment. Time to make his him to make an adjustment. But does he have the stuff to make that adjustment? Yeah, and he did. I guess he technically didn't give up any runs. He just allowed two of – his inherited runners to score uh, and, and got out of that inning. But yeah, I mean, he did walk a guy, gave up a hit. It was, yeah, not an ideal situation there. Uh, it, it is probably too early to panic for sure, but uh, I, I hope that he can show, yeah, show that he's turned it around uh, pretty soon because right now the Dodgers bullpen is a little bit questionable. Yeah, it's Daniel Hudson and Evan Phillips and then – flip a coin on everybody else whether they're going to be good or bad you know michael gross had good performances yeah bad performances bessie has had good performances and had bad performances mostly bad but you know he he did right the ship a little bit in this game on sunday you know ryan brazier's had good and bad fire eisen's had a couple chances now against padre specifically and giving up three runs each time at least so yeah uh especially knowing what we're going to talk about next with all the injuries and everything else it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better anytime soon yeah, but we're not going to get there yet because they did have one good pitching performance this weekend. That was uh, Gavin Stone on Saturday. He had, was perfect through five, uh, gave up a walk to break up the perfect game in the sixth inning, and then a hit right after that. Well, got a double play and then a hit. Uh, ended up giving up two runs in six and two thirds. I know yeah, he six. pitched into the seventh uh, and and looked really, really good. The Dodgers won that game. That, that game kind of went according to plan. Good starting pitching. Good relief pitching, offense showed up, boom, you, you you win that game. That Saturday game is how you would like the game to go. Obviously, guys aren't going to go th throw five perfect innings, but that's the Gavin Stone that we – that the reason I've been so high on Gavin Stone is because he does have that stuff sometimes. Yeah, and he had, he had his pitches working and wasn't getting a lot of strikeouts, as they mentioned on the broadcast, but he was – like, had he kept the perfect game going, his pitch count was right on track to where – you know, Roberts probably would have let him let him, you know, through in those later innings. He was what like 60 pitches in that sixth inning, I think, 60 towards closer to 70. Uh, and then lost a little bit, started giving up some hits, started leaving some pitches up in the zone. But yeah, that that's the Gavin Stone that they need right now. It's, you know, a guy that can give them length, a guy that can, you know, keep them in ball games. And being able to do it without the strikeouts is what's impressive because he, you know, he was able to get some quick outs, was able to be efficient, and uh, yeah, it was fun to watch. It was exciting because, you know, you start thinking about it and you saw some of the way his pitches were moving, and you're like, hey, he might have a chance at this. Um, unfortunately, you know, the walk kind of got him all out of whack, but it was it was fun before that. 
Yeah, well, the Dodgers won't be getting much length from their starters in the series upcoming series against the Nationals. Uh, we're going to talk about why. So uh, thanks for making Locked on Dodgers your first listen, and please keep it Locked on Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. This episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard's not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra, re extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. Hey, we're back. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, it's Locked On's NFL mock, drive, mock Draft Live on April 17th at 7 Eastern Time, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time to hear who the local uh, Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft is April 17th at 7 Eastern Time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. We also want to remind you, you can catch this episode every day on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. And if you do that every day, you're called an everydayer. If you're not an everydayer, you can become one by doing that. And thanks to our everydayers, you mean a lot to us. You can also go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. You can text back and forth with us. We give you our thoughts via text message on news, rumors, all that stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So check that out. It's just a few bucks a month with a free 14-day trial. And remember to catch every pitch of every Dodger game on SiriusXM or the SXM app by searching for uh, searching for Dodgers. And you can listen to this podcast on the SXM app by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Uh, we, With our insiders this weekend, we were texting quite a bit because we got the news on Saturday that JP Fireyes and Nick Ramirez were both being called up. And for a while, we didn't know what the corresponding moves were. Uh, they both ended up pitching on Sunday, making their, uh, or Ramirez making his Dodger debut, Fire Eyes in his domestic Dodgers debut. We did find out during the rain delay that delayed the start of the game on Saturday that the two corresponding moves were Connor Brogdon going on the IL, which, you know, uh, made sense, I guess, uh, didn't not make sense. But the, the bigger news and the more, uh, distressing was that Bobby Miller was going on the IL with right shoulder inflammation. Uh, they did say that uh, it was nothing major. They didn't think uh, there was conflicting reports. One report said that he didn't need imaging. Another said that he had an MRI and it was clear. And after the game, Dave Roberts wasn't totally sure whether or not he had had an MRI. Uh, but uh, on Sunday, they said that he will start throwing a baseball game sometime this week. And they expect it to be a relatively short IL stint. Uh, but still kind of puts the Dodgers in a bind for the next 15 days, huh, Vince? Yeah, definitely puts them in a bind when they're already in that bind, just in the sense of arms that are available to go. Uh, you know, Bobby Miller obviously is going to well, planned on to be a big part of the Dodgers rotation uh, to have the show. 
it wasn't a matter of it necessarily hurting while he was pitching so much. It was kind of the recovery the days after. And you know, one of Dave Roberts' favorite quotes, there's a little bit of smoke. And he, basically, that's what he said about Miller. So, you know, hopefully it is a short one. But knowing the Dodgers and everyone else uh, involved with Bobby Miller and, and the future, you know, they'll, they'll kind of take it slow. Uh, Robert said they would call up a triple A starter to pitch one of the games this week. Mentioned Cal Hurd as a potential chance. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's not Hurd, it's got to be Knack. Those guys are, you know, well, at least Knack is stretched out. Or Denelson Lamette. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, Knack stretched out, Lamette stretched out enough, Cal Hurd stretched out enough. But it seems like it's going to be a week of a lot of movement, and we might see some new guys come up at some point because they're going to need to cover a lot of innings. Yeah, and they were already uh, planning on doing one bullpen game anyway uh, because just day offs and everything. And that's why Ryan Yarbrough, he pitched the 10th inning on Friday uh, and they then they pulled him after only one inning. And Robert said that's because he expects him to be a bulk guy in the National Series. Had a similar thing with Michael Grove on Saturday, only pitched one inning. And so again, you expect maybe he's going to get multiple innings in either the same game as Yarbrough or a different. I mean, Grove and Yarbrough piggybacking makes a lot of sense as far as contrasting styles and both guys being built up to throw four innings each. You know, it could could be a bullpen saver if they can take down eight innings of a game. Uh, and then, you know, so I guess there's a path to seeing this not being a huge disaster with the, the off day on Thursday. If, if Grove and Yarbrough could take down eight innings of a game, and then whoever they call up, whether it's Hurt or Lamette or Knack, could go five innings in his game. You know, you, you can get through this week, and, it, and it's not a disaster. Uh, the problem is, over the last few years, hoping for everything to go right for the Dodgers when it comes to pitching uh, it hasn't always worked, at least as you – know, the, the results have been pretty good over the last couple of years, but the actual uh, usage hopes rarely go according to plan. Yeah, and then, you know, look, I mean, you play who you play. The Nationals aren't expected to be a playoff team, but they have had, you know, some good offensive performances early on so far. So it won't be a walk in the park, but, you know, it could be worse than playing like the Braves right now or, or someone with more of a, a higher chance of, of big offensive nights. The other part of this is that we might have not have another young arm for a while. I mean, she and was shut down again from throwing. Dave Roberts says it's going to be more of a long-term thing now, which basically means we would have no idea when we're going to see Sheehan at any point because it will be shut down. you got to imagine a week or two, even if he comes back right after that, he's got to build back up another month, uh, You know, basically another spring training to kind of get ready to come back. So that's a tough one. And, you know, every, uh, we talked about this a lot, how, you know, the Dodgers, oh, the Dodgers have a lot of starting pitchers and everything else, and – uh yeah, we're almost to the point where Walker Buehler is going to have to come back maybe a little bit early, potentially. But uh, even he got almost hurt at, in his rehab start. So Yeah, Buehler did take a, a line drive off the hand and was scheduled to throw 75 or 80 pitches, ended throw, throwing like 28 or something. Uh, and, you know, Dave Roberts did say it was precautionary and he expects him to make his next rehab start on Thursday. And it seems like maybe the plan even before all these injuries was that might be the end of the rehab for Buehler and then he's back in the big leagues. Now that might just have to be the case whether it was the plan before or not you know because if he can even give you five innings at the big league level that's probably better than some other options and it's all setting up an in interesting scenario because uh next year like if if we assume like Sheehan is if we just don't count on him for anything this year uh we assume that Dustin May won't be back as a starter this year uh if he pitches he'll probably be in relief like next year you have Sheehan and May and Gonsolin uh, and uh, who else? Is, oh, Otani coming back next year as starting pitchers, plus all the rumors about Roki Sasaki that they're going to sign him. I mean, that's a rotation right there. And then, oh, by the way, you also have Tyler Glasnow and Yoshinobu Yamamoto and, you know, Walker Buehler will be a free agent. We don't know if he'll be back. Clint Kershaw, we don't know if he'll be back, but they've got uh, uh, Bobby Miller you know, they, they've got a lot of starters, Michael Grove, I mean, not Michael, Gavin Stone, uh, for next year. And so it's like, it, it, in a way, it kind of limits what they can do this year if they do run into starting pitching need because you're not going to go out and trade for a guy who has three years of team control left probably because 
you already are kind of trying to figure out how you're going to manage having nine or 10 starters next year anyway. Um, but so it could be a, you know, I, I guess maybe if the, if the Orioles underperformed and fell out of contention and they wanted to flip Corbin Burns, who's a free agent after this year, you know, uh, guys like that who are, you know, in their last year under contract could be a target at the free agent market if necessary, because we don't really know when or if Clayton Kershaw's coming back this year. There's a lot of questions about the Dodgers starting pitching. Yeah, if you can hopefully get, you know, Glasnow and Yamamoto at least stay up top, then your options open up a little bit. I mean, we saw Julio Tehran start one game, get DFA'd, and I think now he's signed with the Cubs. He's, he's I forget who he started for, Mets maybe or someone like that. Uh, you know, Zach Greinke, Rich Hill are out there if they really got desperate, but, you know, they're going to weather the storm as long as they can before having to kind of reach out to anybody that's more of a long-term play. Or not necessarily a long-term play either, I guess. Yeah, but Bueller coming back will hopefully help. Hopefully Miller's stay on the I.O. will be short. Hopefully Gavin Stone, what we saw on Saturday, is indicative somewhat of who he really is. And then, I mean, because the, even right now, this could be a good starting rotation if they get guys healthy. So uh, we're going to come back in a minute. We're going to talk about a guy who's tearing it up in the minors for the Dodgers and a guy who's tearing it up in the majors who used to tear it up in the minors for the Dodgers. Uh, so thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen, and please continue to keep it Locked On Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data that you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news or original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, re, uh, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures that you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination. yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Dot com. Hey, we are back. Thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning, especially thanks to our everydayers. Uh, please become an everydayer if you're not. Uh, you can become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. You can check out Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles, the two 24-7 streaming channels on YouTube from the Locked On Podcast Network. And you can listen to every pitch of every Dodger game on SiriusXM or the SXM app by searching for Dodgers. So, Vince, uh, we've got two guys who are hitting pretty well. Uh, Michael Bush, who the Dodgers traded in the offseason, is hitting pretty well for the Cubs. He homered again on Sunday, so he's homered now in four straight games. Uh, he We saw him hit well against the Dodgers last week. Uh, he's he's doing really well. Uh, and then Andy Pajes is still in the Dodgers organization in AAA. His OPS is around 1,100, maybe a little higher. He hit two home runs on Sunday, just dominating. And those two combined uh, have a lot of people wondering why in the world Chris Taylor keeps getting at bats and Kiki Hernandez keeps getting at bats, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I you know, and, and it makes sense for us to talk about them together because I, in the past, lumped the two of the – two of them together a lot uh, out loud on this podcast because they both struck me as guys who didn't really have a fit on the Dodgers, so probably needed to be traded. And that's what the Dodgers did with Bush. Uh, but with Pajes, a couple interesting things happened. One was that he got better. There was uh, just, just over a year ago, prospect rankings were, uh, some were worried that he might not even stay physically good enough to be a corner outfielder that he might have to be a DH or a first baseman. Uh, and he improved his physical conditioning drastically uh, and improved his play along with that, uh, which changed things in one way. And the other thing that changed was Mookie Betts went from being a gold glove right fielder to being an infielder. And so now suddenly uh, the future for a Dodgers right field prospect doesn't seem 
blocked. And a guy like Andy Pajes, who is hitting the ball like crazy, it has people legitimately and understandably wondering, should Andy Pajes be hitting the ball in the major league instead of the minor leagues? Yeah. And, you know, the other thing with Pajes is, I don't remember at this point last year, but at some point around the time last year is when he had shoulder surgery and you weren't, you know, a lot of young guys, well, not just young guys, but people in general when they get shoulder surgery don't necessarily make it back this quick in terms of getting their power. I mean, we saw Bellinger and his shoulder and, you know, he also wasn't hitting the ball very well, but it also, you know, he did say the first year back he wasn't hundred percent and took him a while to get going. And then his mechanics were all out of whack. So, you know, so it's a good sign to see Pot has kind of back and we you know we saw it in spring training. We're seeing it now in the minor leagues. It's not, I don't think it's a, a matter of a fluke or anything. He, he's legitimately, he was a legitimate, you know, hitting prospect before kind of stays the same Michael Bush in, in that same realm was, this is what we thought and everyone said he could do. He could hit. And he's hitting on a hot spot right now. And, you know, he terrorized the Dodgers a little bit when they played against the Cubs. And, you know, good for him that this is what he, you know, was able to do, take advantage of the situation that he has right now. Um, I will say I watched a little bit of the Cubs game, I think, during the rain delay on Saturday. And there was – it didn't end up be hurting the Cubs, I don't think. But there was a play at first base on a low throw from Danby Swanson that he just missed. And, you know, I ended up not being in and out. Uh, like I said, I don't think he hurt the Cubs. Uh, either way, they won the series over the weekend. But I'm just – like, there was legitimate concerns defensively here and there about what he could do. But, you know, the hitting was always going to be there. But, you know, as for Pajes, we talked about Taylor the other day and how much of a leash they might give him. Uh, but, again, with a guy like Taylor, if they do say, hey, we need you to go reinvent your swing in Arizona, you know, maybe he's going to have a sore wrist or something like that. Yeah, uh, on the Bush front, you know, the fact is he's playing first base for the Cubs. The Dodgers have a first baseman. Who's better than Michael Bush? And they have a DH. Who's better than Michael Bush? Uh, and if he could play third base, they're running Christopher, Christopher Morell out at third base in Chicago, who's not a good third baseman. And so if Bush could play third base, he'd be doing that, you know? So the fact is, realistically, he didn't have a, a spot. And that's why the Dodgers traded him. And I'm happy for him that he's having success. Hope that continues, except against the Dodgers. Uh, Pa has, yeah, like the fact he, I'm always careful with the phrase, well, he couldn't be worse because, you know, people say, well, uh, Bush couldn't be worse than Muncie at third base defensively. Sure he could. You know, Muncie, we've, Muncie's been pretty good lately. Uh, defensively. And that's what we talked about. Like we saw it last year too. He struggled at the beginning at the end, but was pretty good for three or four months in the middle of the season. Uh, he's been pretty good lately. I think Mac Michael Bush would be significantly worse defensively than Max Muncie. And so I try not to say that phrase, but the fact is Andy Paw has could not be worse than Chris Taylor has been so far this year. Chris Taylor has one hit in what is it? 20, 32 at bats, something like that. Uh, he has, uh, he struck out nearly half of his plate appearances. Maybe maybe he's up to half. He's right around ha half of his plate appearances. It's unsustainable. And I, I mentioned on Friday that uh, some people were upset that Chris Taylor did get in at bat in the bottom of the 11th inning in Friday's game. Uh, and, and I said on Twitter something along the lines that if Taylor is going to break out of a slump, it's going to be on the field and not on the bench. Uh, and, and a couple people maybe misinterpreted that as uh, – optimism that Taylor was going to break out. Uh, and, and it wasn't that, but the fact, you know, once Roberts made the decision to put Taylor in the game, pinch hitting for Chris Taylor with Taylor Trammell or Austin Barnes would have been that that's not the kind of decisions you make in the, in the middle of a game, because that would have been a much bigger decision than this game. That would have been, we have given up on Chris Taylor. And you don't make that decision in the 11th inning of a game. You make that decision after a game, in between games, talking with people. And what we saw was Chris Taylor didn't play after that this weekend. And so uh, there were opportunities in the game on Sunday, left-handed pitchers and Outman up and Lux up. And those are the situations that got Chris Taylor into the game on Friday, didn't get Taylor into the game on Sunday. So I do think we are seeing a change and, you know, Roberts, unfortunately, did say that Taylor is fully healthy and it's just mental over the weekend. And so uh, it will be a little bit harder to sell an injury at this point. Um, but, you know, I, there's got to be I, – I, I don't know. 
you, you can't do phantom injuries. Uh, maybe he does need to uh, take some live BP with the the orders to uh, plunk him. And then, hey, your hips bruised. Sweet. 10-day IL for you. Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, he. it seems like the fact that he didn't get in the games later after Friday uh, are probably telling us something about their near-term plans for him. Yeah, and like I said, it, it's one of those where one thing he picks up in the cage or in BP or something could unlock you know that swing and get him back to normal, but you don't know. I'm, we, we know that they can wait, <laughs> really. Legitimately, they can wait uh, at least a few more months before I would imagine it becomes an issue that affects with win-loss record just because the rest of their offense. But it's going to be hard, especially, you know, when Michael Bush the last few years, when he was so good offensively, it was like, okay, we bring him up, but then what? Where is he going to play? Like, there wasn't a spot for him to play. Uh, you know, I know he learned some corner outfield and maybe the Dodgers could have stuck him out there, but Mookie was still an outfielder for the most part um, until last year, the second half of the season. But, you know, then they had outfielders, you know, Hayward was good last year and, and other guys. So, but with Pajes, like legitimately, there's a spot available in the outfield, corner outfield to play on a somewhat regular basis. And it's going to be hard to keep that down too long. Yeah, realistically, Kike Hernandez is the bigger conversation point here because Hernandez is the one who was kind of promised that he would play against left-handed pitching. Uh, you know, that's the that's the spot that you know with Jason Hayward hurt, uh, they could call up uh, Andy Paez and say we don't even need a platoon in right field. We're just going to let him play, and even if it was only for a couple weeks and then they send him back down for a little while, but let him get his feet wet in the big leagues and see what happens. And we saw in 2017, Bellinger came up because Jock Peterson got hurt. And they said, we know he's a first baseman and a center fielder, but he's a left fielder now. And he never went back to the minors because he forced his way onto the issue onto the roster. I think Paz is going to get that shot sometime soon. And it's just a question of does Taylor or Kike get hurt uh, or, hurt that's air quotes if you're listening on the podcast uh does somebody else get legitimately hurt you know uh some one way or another well, i mean tremel's not even playing against right-handed pitchers either yeah tremel isn't playing at all and so like it seems like the plan hey, have we heard any updates on when they actually expect hayward back is it or they expect it just to be took some swings i think that was the last update but not anything immediate i don't think because right now it feels like is it tremel's just keeping that roster spot warm and then they'll dfa him once once Hayward and maybe hoping that he will clear waivers and then he can go to triple a and, and they can work on a swing there and try to help him get fixed. Cause he is only 26 former top prospect, but, but yeah, like if, uh, and maybe that's the answer right now is you, you DFA Tramel now and, and bring up Andy Pajas and say, I know Kike, we, you, you know, you understood that that promise was based on performance and you're not performing. And so, Andy Pajas is going to get 80% of the starts in right field for the next few weeks and, and see what happens. And, and there's no guarantee. Like one thing the Dodgers know is that outfielders who hit really well in the minors don't always hit really well in the big leagues. And so maybe he would struggle, uh, but maybe he would hit really well and force his way onto the issue and uh, onto the roster and stay like Cody Bellinger did, like Jock Peterson did, like so many guys have, you come up and you hit. I mean, Corey Seager came up in 2015, right? And uh, last month of the season, last month of the season, just a September call up. And by two weeks in, they're like, Jimmy Rollins, who? And, you know, Seager was the starter in the postseason. You know, you can, it, it can happen. And Andy Paw has, you know, probably isn't the next Corey Seager, but I don't know that he's not. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see what happens, but it seems like Pajas is intent on forcing the issue by hitting the cover off the ball in AAA, and I think he's going to get his shot pretty soon. So uh, you got anything else for today, Vince? Nope, no more. Uh, hopefully, you know, it's all, It's never fun to lose a series. It's never fun to lose a series to the Padres, uh, but, you know, the Padres just snuck back up to 500. Dodgers are still in first place in the division. Uh, series the annual the April Padres series win where they, uh, you know, they've done different things in the past in the early months of the season when they've won the series. and Yeah. So congratulations to the Padres, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens from here. Uh, the series with the Nationals starts today, Monday. 
three game series, then they have a day off, and then I don't even know who comes to finish up the homestand. Who plays? Oh, the Mets come to town. That'll be fun. Uh, so you know, six more games on this homestand plus a day off, and then they'll have another day off. So uh, two days off in the next eight days, which will be nice for the bullpen and the starting rotation, and then hopefully Walker Bueller back soon after that. So a lot to keep an eye on. It should be fun. Thank you all for making Locked on Dodgers your first listen, especially our everydayers. You can become an everydayer by watching and listening every weekday morning. You can become a Locked on Dodgers insider by going to join subtext.com slash Locked on Dodgers. You can check out Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles, the two 24-7 streaming channels on YouTube from the Locked On Podcast Network. And you can catch every pitch of every Dodger game on SiriusXM or the SXM app by searching for Dodgers. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Locked On Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at VinceSense91. I'm on Twitter at Snydog, and our DMs are open there. You can also email us, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com. Or send us a voicemail or a text message to 323-863-LOCK-5625. We are here every weekday morning. We hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.